Top story this morning, of course, the breaking developments out of Russia, where the head of the mercenary Wagner Group launched the most direct challenge to Vladimir Putin's grip on power in his 19 years as president. It started on Friday when Yegevny Prigozhin, the leader of a private army, posted a video to social media. In it, he suggests Russia's invasion of Ukraine was launched under false pretenses before accusing Russian military leaders of bombing his own soldiers. Prigozhin vowed to retaliate, and his forces began their movements east soon after. And by early Saturday morning, Prigozhin's Wagner Group had claimed control of a military command center in southern Russia. Video shows civilians filming soldiers and tanks on the streets of the Russian city as other Wagner forces continued their push north toward Moscow. It came as Russian President Vladimir Putin made a televised address calling Prigozhin's army and his uh, armed mutiny treason, treason and threatening to punish anyone who turned against the Russian military. Then... On Saturday night, just as quickly as the conflict began, it seemed to end with Belarusian state media announcing that its president, Alexander Lukashenko, a close Putin ally, had mediated an agreement where Prigozhin agreed to stop his army's advance north and turn around. In exchange, Prigozhin would be exiled to Belarus. None of that makes sense. Joining us now, the editor of The New Yorker, David Remnick, former senior operations officer with the CIA, Mark Polymeropoulos, and staff writer at The Atlantic, Ann Applebaum. And why don't we just jump right in with your piece in The Atlant Atlantic entitled, Putin is Caught in His Own Trap. And you write in part this, Democratic politicians spend a lot of time thinking about how to engage people and persuade them to vote. But a certain kind of autocrat, of whom Putin is the outstanding example, seeks to convince people of the opposite, not to participate, not to care, and not to follow politics at all. The propaganda used in Putin's Russia has been designed in part for this purpose, the constant provision of absurd, conflicting explanations and ridiculous lies the famous fire hose of falsehoods encourages many people to believe that there is no truth at all. The result is widespread cynicism. If you don't know what's true after all, then there isn't anything you can do about it. Protest is pointless. Engagement is useless. But the side effect of apathy was on display yesterday as well. For if no one cares about anything, that means they don't care about their supreme leader, his ideology, or his war. Russians haven't flocked to sign up to fight in Ukraine. They haven't rallied around the troops in Ukraine or held emotive ceremonies marking either their successes or their deaths. Of course, they haven't organized to oppose the war, but they haven't organized to support it either. And Anne, that's where Prigozhin has really tapped into a narrative that perhaps Russians might be hearing, and that is that the war in Ukraine, they may have some questions about it. I was very struck by the attitudes of the crowds in Rostov on Saturday. You didn't see people resisting Prigozhin. You didn't see the soldiers looking particularly worried about being there. Um, they were going off to get coffee at a fast food restaurant that used to be called McDonald's. Uh, you saw Prigozhin sitting with the commanders, local military commanders in their headquarters. You didn't see very much resistance. Uh, and I can only conclude from that that people weren't ready to fight back. They weren't ready to stand up for their state or for their leader. Uh, and you saw the same thing with Prigozhin's uh, team of, of men who were uh, you know, on a normal highway going towards Moscow. They met a little bit of fire at one point, but they got pretty far. They got uh, 500 miles into the country without major resistance. Uh, and all, all, again, all my only conclusion is that 
neither the army nor anybody else was particularly willing to to push back. Um, you know, one of Prigozhin's messages has been for the last several weeks and months, actually, is that the war is being fought badly, uh, that the people fighting mm -hmm. it are being badly treated. They don't have enough weapons. They don't have enough equipment. Um, and he even said on Friday or so on just before he launched this uh, crusade, uh, Friday and Saturday, he said, uh, you know, look, I don't even know why we are fighting this war. It's being fought because the the commander in sh the commander of the military, uh, the defense minister, wanted to have a higher rank, and it's being fought because oligarchs wanted to make more money in eastern Ukraine. Um, so he's offering a, a very different message from the one that that Putin is offering. And as I said, you didn't see over the weekend that much pushback.